Okay. So I am here with Failco. Failco was a streamer personality when Gigantic was around. I think that's probably the best description of what you were a part of in the community. Yeah. Um, but I guess I should just ask a general question of like, what was your involvement with Gigantic? How did you discover it? All that nonsense. Oh, yeah. Sure. I like super remember the first time I saw it was at a PAX East. They had these enormous art boards up that, you know, it said Gigantic had their crazy graphic art. And I mean, how could you not get interested in it? And it, it was like so random because I remember going up and talking to one of the, the coaches at the time and being really excited about it. Oh my gosh, just being so obsessed that I was like, that was one of the reasons I started just streaming it. I was streaming before, uh, like random games like Dark Souls, which I was obsessed with at the time. But then I just started only streaming Gigantic. <laughs> Lost all my old like following because they were like, we're not playing your games anymore. And I was like, I don't care. Gigantic's the best. Yeah. Um, And then just like, it was my mission to like be good at it. I had never, like before Gigantic actually... I had always played like Mech Assault. Do you have you ever heard of Mech Assault? It was like my game. I was really good at that it. That sounds <laughs> kind of familiar. Oh, it was awesome. It was basically like, like class based robot. Like, okay. Like, like team versus like team. Like a team fighter, like robot mech oh, yeah. game. That sounds so much fun. I think I've seen that on Steam before. Freaking awesome. And go yeah. figure, I'd play the robot that goes invisible. So when I found Trip was a character, I was like, this is my character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I. I was like, I don't know. I just kind of like fell into playing it just way too much. And I thought I was good at it until I found out later I was really bad at it. There were so many people who had just been playing it were amazing. And I was like, I want to be like them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, the devs were so amazing. And, I mean, they, they picked a few of us to go to events. Wow. And... You know, I mean, I was like one of the only girls streaming it. So I felt like I was basically guaranteed a spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was right. Um, so I went to like uh, Rooster Teeth Expo was like the first thing. And we had to teach all these people in line how to play Gigantic in like five minutes. Let me tell you, hardest job ever. Oh, my God. Uh, I cannot imagine. <laughs> Oh, it was very hard, but it was like really rewarding. And they all got shirts afterwards. And. I remember at the end of these events, we would like, people would be going every day of these events. So by the end of it, we'd be like, you want to face the coaches? Oh, and God. so we, we would have like an event where we destroyed them. It was amazing. <laughs> we like green mapped them. We summed up every point. It You're was like, so isn't this fun. game fun? <laughs> yeah, isn't this fun? Yeah. But it was like really cool because everybody was having a great time and like bringing it to the world was awesome. And, you know, they had these crazy art around their booth it was nuts um a lot of the devs were there just talking about their game i met a bunch of people who streamed it freaking cool so i don't know i feel like i was so lucky because not only rtx i got to go to pax west where they also had their booth and i mean if you've never been to pax west you should go i've it's never been enough. to pax i've always always wanted to go Oh, you gotta go! Oh my gosh! I'm on the West Coast too. I need to go to PAX West. PAX West is crazy. It's, that's where they built the full scale house that was the Resident Evil oh my uh, God. Seven house, where you could like demo the game, which I should have done. I was too scared. Wow. That's <laughs> but, so cool. Yeah, wild, right? And um, I don't know. It was like just what a cool bunch of devs. Uh, so I just I tried to involve myself as much as possible. I even tried applying to Gigantic. Uh, I did not get the job, obviously. We would have all known if I did. Come uh, on. So did. <laughs> Come and he on. was much better at it than me. So I'm really happy he did. And I got to meet him in real life, too. And he is wow. extremely cool. So. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, what a crazy experience. Basically, it stemmed from my obsession. And, I mean, I won't lie. I took a few days off of work here and there just yep. to play the game. So did I. It was yeah, it was one of those times. Reminds me of when I used to play World of Warcraft when I would do yeah. the same freaking thing. And yeah, <laughs> slightly unhealthy, but also like the game was just so much fun. Right. Um, so hard to stay away from it. 
yeah. it really inspired me to get more into the game industry. So I didn't even know what UI UX was gigantic and remaking some of their screens like on my own time is how I even discovered what I wanted to do for a career. So thank you, Gigantic. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> Long winded explanation of my involvement. <laughs> also did YouTube videos. Maybe you've seen them. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Famous scrim videos. Excellent oh scrim videos. A lot of me screaming yep. or drinking during it. Yes. <laughs> very famous. A lot of cursing. <laughs> I, I'm not saying do that, but that was me. I guess that was just the personality of Falco at the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Awesome. Well, <laughs> okay. So, what? So, gigantic. I feel like one of the one of the most interesting things about it is the biggest draw usually for most people is the art style. You see the art style, you see yeah. like no game at the time looked quite like it and when you watched any gameplay of it you were like holy shit these animations are insane. Like these yeah. animations are insane, the music's so good, like everything just flowed so well together. And yeah. I feel like when I first played it, I was a huge MOBA fan. I had Summers nice. of Dota 2. I had Summers of Smite. That's still my, unfortunately, oh, yeah. most played game of all time. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. That's great. You gotta have something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I remember when I played Gigantic, I was like, this is like everything I like about a MOBA, but the concepts in the game are so mm. deep. Like the yeah. stamina mechanic is just a whole world of its own. Like it's got so much depth to it and yeah. the creature summoning, not having um, traditional lanes where minions walk down and kill towers. Mm -hmm. What do you think were like really cool core concepts that Gigantic had that like nothing had at the time or no game has tried up until oh, yeah. this day? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the obvious one is like the giant monsters, right? Like that, that for me, seeing that in the cool trailers they put together was like definitely their main draw. They were like gigantic, <laughs> giant creatures. They, the fact that they literally go across the battlefield with you was, I think, something very unique. Like no one had really tried that. And the fact that they actually got it to work mm -hmm. was insane. I mean, you yeah, know, sometimes the, creatures would cr uh, clash and they'd spin and nothing yeah. would happen sometimes like, one would knock you and it'd like push you across the map <laughs> yeah. happened many times yeah. uh but you know most of the time it, it worked and it looked amazing and it was hard to not just stand there and be like wow that looks so cool and be yeah. like oh yeah i gotta go over there <laughs> yeah, yeah. um <laughs> But I mean, that that for me was like the biggest thing. And then obviously, like you said, the stamina system was really, it was so intricate. It was like, you could really use skill to, uh, if you knew any timings of abilities, you could start like iframing and just mm -hmm. like dodging and literally like duel, like it had dueling, really. You could, you could fight any other character. You could leave when you wanted to like, get out of there and then the regen out of combat was a new kind of thing i hadn't seen either which was you could really stay alive for a long time if you were good right um and it was just that concept those two concepts to me were like really big and the fact okay well i mean we have to talk about the kits the kits were you could make any character be so different depending on what kit you chose and there were definitely like you know meta things that there were some bad use. options yeah yeah i mean i think my last very last game of a gigantic pick probably the worst title build i could have ever picked just against on purpose team. oh i mean like you know uh, like <laughs> sometimes that's just how it is right yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> and you know it was that was kind of like a good and bad thing because once you if you made a mistake in gigantic you could never take it back it was mm. like permanent mistake and that was, it was very punishing um, for like doing the wrong things. But like, if you chose the right things and it was working for you, it felt so good, right? Uh, so it really felt like from start to finish of every game, you were mastering that character or you were figuring out what not to do. <laughs> right. Um, so there was just like so much knowledge 
in every game. And it just felt so in depth. Like every character could do so many things. And yeah. I think like just the the absolute like customization player expression was so strong and gigantic. It was just like like everybody had their character, right? And you, you were like, yeah, this kid, I associate with this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is how <laughs> like, I play this character. Yeah, and yeah. like, I think we all had like, people knew each other's mains. And like, for for Gigantic, it just felt like having a main meant like you had the craziest mastery of this character. And it felt a little different than something like League where, yes, you have upgrades. It's a little more straightforward, but it's... Like, you could still master a character in, like, a deep way. Like, this felt like that, but, like, in a way where it's just character v. character duels. There's no in-between. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you could fight, like, creatures, but, like, it it's literally killing other players right. that really matters. So, something that Gigantic really, like, got right it felt so, like, intimate. Yeah, I, I think... <laughs> um... I think something I compare it to, I mean, just because this game gets compared, of course, to Overwatch and Paladins, is <laughs> those games have really cool, unique characters. I, I actually like both of those games a lot. Yeah. Um, but something I always was frustrated with, especially with Overwatch, is that there's really only one play way to play a character. You have no itemization. You have no yeah. skill upgrades. You have no branching trees that give you different... It's, mm -hmm. this is how you play this character, do it to the best of your ability, which is fine, and it's really easy for beginners, but there mm -hmm. is something about Gigantic, like for me, I was a Woo player. Every Woo played completely oh differently. Like, yeah. <laughs> my Woo, I tried to be like Panay, because Panay was just, <laughs> yeah. he was god tier at it Woo. Was so good. <laughs> but like, there, there were such different ways because of like the stamina system, especially with the melee characters, like... Mm -hmm. so many different ways to utilize stamina and like um you had to like get really good at your movement and how you would maneuver around fights but then also yeah. like one of the examples i always bring up is um lord gnosis his e ability the one where he gets like a speed buff you can yeah. either get attack speed or or like the bleed or whatever it is or you can get health so it's yeah. like every character can be built to fit different roles and i thought that was so cool because like if you have a bunch of assassins and ranged people you could just make gnosis a tank you know yeah. he doesn't he have to be tank. like some only damage character or only this character or whatever you could fit characters into different roles like i would watch people play woo support as well like i watched <laughs> Pene play woo support it's like how does this even work <laughs> like yeah there were some crazy combinations that you could do and even though some of the options were kind of shitty at times like i feel like if the game would have been out long enough they could have really made some like unique options for each person to play a character they want to play in the way yeah. that they want to play it Definitely. And you started seeing that kind of like when Ramsey was released. Like yeah. you could tell that character had some intense ideas. And playing against a Ramsey as like a trip or a Taito felt almost like they were kind of like outdated compared mm. to him. Uh, so I, uh, hmm. <laughs> Ramsey was cool. I really I just liked felt Ramsey. like, I mean, yeah, Ramsey was definitely like, he had like a million dodges and like stuns. The, and it the just stun felt like, upgrade that you could get on your dodge. Oh my God. <sighs> my god the character was insane Brilliant. so it, it just felt like like i agree with you though like if they kept going like it felt like they they would have to like revisit a few characters and kind of like bring them up because they felt really straightforward a lot of the early ones other than Voden, who no matter what felt pretty damn good every yeah. time or beckett right which will never change or never nerfed a day in her life yeah for you know. real <laughs> she's a problem a problem throughout the whole lifespan but, you know, it's okay. It's like some <laughs> characters are meant to be that straightforward, you mm -hmm. know? And, like, new characters are always going to be crazier, but it, it definitely showed, like, how in-depth you can get. Right. Oh, man. You had so many choices yeah. in that game, and I think that's, like, that, like, contributed to being so difficult for people to pick up, too. I mean, it was, like... Yeah. Admittedly, <laughs> admittedly <laughs> that was another thing. <laughs> to to add to the confusion i guess is i don't know i'm not a game designer so it's hard it's hard for me to input of like what they should have done differently but 
the whole like game plan of Gigantic on top of the character customization was a lot for for new players. Try to teach five players who have never played it how to upgrade their characters, who are all very different. In the middle of fighting, uh, is extremely difficult. Yeah. Just go over each one. Hey, I think you should choose. Hey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you're dead. Sorry. Like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's a crazy game that just had no rest at yeah. all. Um, but that was kind of unique to it, right? It was literally just get in there and fight and don't stop. I mean, you can run away, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, playing assassin, oh my gosh, had to be the one to poke everything, and oh, we'll get into that later anyway. It was great. <laughs> okay, so, on a bit of a more difficult, sad topic, in your honest opinion, what do you think were some of the biggest issues that Gigantic struggled with, and... Um, ultimately, why do you think it failed? Yeah, sure. Um, so like one of them has to be the complexity, right? Like it, it was so much fun, but we had been playing it for a while. So like we started getting used to it, but when we, when you first played, weren't, were you overwhelmed? Because I was, it was extremely difficult to like understand the game. There was no tutorial, um, there was basically barely any resources to really have you understand what was going on in the game. And I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, like the UI of like the health bars was a little confusing, all of that stuff. They tried really hard. And I think a lot of it was, was good, but it was hard to understand. Are you talking about the old one. design or the new design? The old design. Yeah. The old design when you was first rough. Started, oh yeah. my gosh. I think they got it. Like they started getting it towards the end where it felt much more, easy to understand auto wounds you could see it you were like great but i mean the amount of information Mm -hmm. for me it was basically like picking up league like if you've never played it's like i don't know what to do yeah i put i put maybe 10 (laughs) hours into league because every time that i play it every like three years i'm like this is too much for me i can't i don't know what i'm doing (laughs) it's so much they add more every time right and it's like it's crazy, and like while Gigantic didn't have items, like their upgrades were almost their items. Right. I mean, it's the same kind of deal, but it was like, I think honestly, like what I just said before, there was no moments of rest in Gigantic. Mm-hmm. You were just going, going, going. So it was it was hard for people to like pick that up and just go because they'd get frustrated. They were like, I don't know, am I doing good? Am I supposed? To, where am I going? You know, over games like Overwatch are very simple. It's mm-hmm. like go to this one place that's it kill Your character people. does this yeah that's it you don't have any well, upgrades just yeah. do the thing if right. you want to do something else pick another character and it's like super like i don't want to say baby mode but kind of you know <laughs> what i mean like it's like this is easy for anyone to understand digestible like, by everyone it, yeah it has yeah. that going for it with like very like easy ui you're like there's the objective i know how to get there easy mm-hmm. gigantic did not have that it was nope. You had to know timings. You had to know rotations. It was a lot to throw at somebody right away. And there was not, there was just like not a lot of teaching materials. Like, and, you know, at first in the beta, they had done a lot of community coaching and they had events where people would go in there. They would learn from a community coach and it'd be like this big thing that's sponsored by them. I think the problem, one of the problems was like at the, at the time of the game's release, there was nothing like that. It was, they decided to pay, and a lot of games do this. It's not just Gigantic's fault. Like, pay big streamers, play the mm. game, and these big streamers have no idea how to play the game. And, you know, they're making comments that are, like, either disparaging or whatever towards the game. And it's like there was no custom match. So the game was released with like without a lot of features. And to be competitive, you have to have these, right? Mm-hmm. Like... So it sucks. And I know we all know there was like the Microsoft deal where they had to like basically remake the game. So who knows what kind of pressure the team was under. All I know, and I will say, is I know the artists spent hours and hours of overtime just to give us those prestige skins. So like they're amazing and I will never say anything bad about them, but it's like (sighs) Gigantic suffered from the same fate as like every game. And I've been, don't worry, I've been part of 
plenty of failed games at this point. <laughs> so I will tell you <laughs> that oh, no. without, without a ton of features, it just happens, right? Yeah. Like, like if your game doesn't have this or that or that, like there were no real quests. It was just collecting cards. There was no real reason to keep playing the characters. There were no uh, other game so modes either. I think that's a big no one. No game mode. And that game mode that they had was a very difficult one. Like yeah. it was, it was a new concept, really. And I mean, it was basically like League kill, kill the um, the tower thing, kill the thing, but not yeah. <laughs> because you can't just go up to it and shoot it, you know? Because it'll, yeah. Um, so it was like it was definitely like it takes a little bit of time, and I just think at the time of release, it just didn't have enough features and no events to really have people teach and maybe this was on us as content creators we should have been better about this but i mean it was it was tough you know yeah um so poor gigantic but yeah it's hard to succeed as a pvp game it really yeah. is <laughs> there there was a lot pivoted against it honestly and yeah and overwatch had released recently Right. I think, and that was like that took so much thunder away, right. and people were comparing, you know, HK is like Bastion's, like, uh, no, HK like <laughs> came first, okay, like get out of here with your bird Bastion. This guy has a backpack, okay, like <laughs> HK was way more interesting. Oh, it was so frustrating because yeah, there were just people would just compare them. I remember like there was like a race to to release first and check in, mm -hmm. and it just didn't make it, and. It's tough. I, w I always wonder what would have happened if they released before Overwatch and got that audience first. Ugh, what mm. stupid Overwatch? Yeah. I played a lot of it too, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just think like I don't know. It just all of those other games that came out. I mean, Overwatch isn't the only one. Like there were niches for all of the other ones too. Like High Res is a big company. Paladins was a big game, but even still, Paladins was compared to Overwatch, and oh, Gigantic yeah, it was to compared be. to Paladins, and then there was Battleborn, yeah. there was Lawbreakers, there were all these games out at the time. Arguably, yeah. like, Paragon 2 was another third-person MOBA. Oh, yeah, yeah. All of those yeah. games were out at the same time. It was just impossible for, you know, like, one or two of them could have only survived, and they did, Paladins and Overwatch. So... It's tough. Yeah. Paladins had a lot of game modes too going on. Yeah, it and, did. I mean, I I think like um, now I've worked for High Res. That's hilarious. But like right. they they're just a bigger company and like had so many more resources. I mean, Matika was really small, and really we have small. to give them them credit. You know, like they 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 were up against some big money like <laughs> giant studios. Yeah, and they did so much with so like little amount of people. So yeah, it's it's just the competition was just too fierce, and they had a game that was too complicated. Yeah, and that sucks because it was so much fun. <laughs> um, so mad. <laughs> so, in uh, I guess on that note, what do you think the developers could have done to, uh, I guess, keep the game alive or compete at a more efficient level? Like, what should they have prioritized? when releasing the game developing the game a lot of it was out of their control obviously the microsoft deal that happened and then um i assume maybe not as big of a shift but the whole arc client like switching over to perfect world system it oh my i mean God. <laughs> so much of a mess but yeah. like if there was yeah. something in their control do you think that they could have prioritized something to to make the game stand out more to make the uh development more smooth Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, in, over the course of Gigantic's like, life, I remember seeing a ton of different game mode ideas of how power is created in the game and collected and how the game like flows. And they had a lot of different ideas. And to me, it's, it felt like even up to a very late point, they didn't really know what they wanted to do for the main game mode. Mm. And honestly, like simplifying it, would have been probably a really strong thing to do for the game because it, it was just very complicated. The maps were huge. Um, so making everything smaller and short would have been really good because the games ended up being very long. People would get frustrated and leave. I don't know about you, but my last game, I think it was three versus five. It was great. Wow. 
Uh, <laughs> that sounds so about people, right. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, games like Overwatch taught people the wrong things that it's okay to leave mm -hmm. because people, it's like no, not not in this game. Um, there was no <sighs> there was no consideration of that in Gigantic. Like meant for you to stay the whole time, uh, upgrade your your character fully, right? And it made to be a brawl, and I felt like that was why it was really difficult because everything was so big. And yes, the name, but I felt like maybe a smaller scale of everything could have been made first, where it's like, here's rounds, here's whatever. Maybe like they just went too hard for the first game mode, and that's why it, it was so hard to get into. Um, obviously, I will talk about the having big streamers stream your game. I've seen a million times. I was on a game that did that. Guess what? Those big streamers, they don't fucking stay around. I get it's like marketing, but like maybe targeting smaller people who are interested in your game, giving them right. a lot of resources um, could have been really, really good because I don't want to know how much money they spent. It could have been Microsoft's money. At this I point, mean, I remember but... <laughs> when I was very, very first watching videos of Gigantic there, there's a streamer soda popping and he oh, was yeah. huge streamer at the mm -hmm. time and he was playing the tutorial for gigantic with like 15k viewers and i was like Gosh. whoa they dropped money on this to get this guy like, to play this probably game like a million dollars <laughs> i hope no oh that would crush me <laughs> oh man and i mean like i get it like marketing budget yeah. is different than like development budgets and but like like we said before, like they were missing so many features that just needed to be there for a game. Like they needed to have like like custom lobbies and spectating should have been made. Spectating. We did it. We did like our like you know tournaments, community tournaments without it, whatever. Because we were great. We were all amazing. But it's like they were lacking the simplest things to like make the game viable against its competitors. Like you you have to have all of those things you have to have progression systems quests and things to get people playing your game every day right um and people i think they were just so turned off by the main game mode being so hard that they just they just didn't stick around so if gigantic were to ever re-emerge that's what i would say simplify it what do people love about it make sure that stays in there but make it more approachable because we got baby overwatch over here being the simplest game ever and people still stick around and play it. So I yeah. think they had, they're on to something, right? So it's like, you gotta like teach people the game. Then you can introduce the harder stuff after, but that, that's my thought. And obviously like, you know, running out of money, it, it was tough. I think not knowing what they wanted to be in the beginning and switching so many times. Did you know Margrave had a, an ax at some point? I've seen videos of that gameplay. <laughs> Of him like swinging it around, yeah, yeah, yeah. so weird. So the game was called like Raid, I think, yep. in the beginning. Raid Shadow Legends, not the same thing, <laughs> not uh, associated. <laughs> but like you know, there were a lot of ideas, and I just, I don't one hundred percent know when they really locked in what it was. But it felt like it probably took a long time, and maybe that really hurt them. Mm. And like, because I mean, you're spending money on all these devs, right? So. A veteran team, apparently. I mean, I they're all incredibly I, talented people. Yeah, I mean, obviously, but uh, like, apparently, <laughs> lots of the people who worked on it had been in the industry for decades and decades oh, and yeah. decades. So it's just yeah. like, yeah, you, you got delicate time when you're working <laughs> with people that big and you have to pay them so much. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, in my opinion, I think uh, going back to Smite, I had always been a conquest player, which is a standard mode, oh, nice. but I never realized that there is a whole separate player base that's probably bigger mm. that plays just arena and just assault, which is like the I big, would play arena. <laughs> yeah, the big group team battle game where there's just nothing but fighting each other. And I think that that is probably the biggest thing Gigantic missed out on. Something oh, yeah. that was just simple enough to digest, to get down the movement to get down how character upgrades work and all that so that when you jumped into the main mode all you had to learn about was creatures and how to fight with a team and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and then probably yeah. a better tutorial as well oh that tutorial yeah you could tell they just 
they put that in because I needed it. Yeah, exactly. It was like kind of bad, but yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did not go into depth really. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh man, everybody wanted that like death match for Jen. Yeah. It, that would have been a great first mode, honestly. Like you just wanted to kill each other. It was right. fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to hear like a character make fun of another character when they kill them um just the character interaction was so good oh yeah, yeah. they they would give like one-liners to each other huh yeah uh, was such a bitch I love it. <laughs> <laughs> ramsey's was one of my ramsey was so sassy i remember with his like I, <laughs> yeah i don't remember exactly what he said it was always so sassy though yeah yeah oh man yeah he had that like greaser haircut and everything mm -hmm. I can't remember Wu's voice. I'm like starting to forget what they all sounded like. I know Taito was like the little chirps. Um, I, yeah, I don't think Taito talked. I think it was the uh, the mouse. Fang. Was, Fang. Fang would make all the noises, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was always really adorable. Yeah. And you're like, you're a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should be enjoying this or... Yeah, there are all murderers yeah. I, i've talked to the devs i'm like you you have a child paco's a child and he's <laughs> killing people are you okay and he's with smiling this? he's laughing about it too <laughs> Yay! <Kill>. spinning around <laughs> in circles <Yeah. laughs> oh my god the character is so great though but ah character well, signs a plus i i think i obviously know the answer to this but if if gigantic were still around would you still be playing it and i guess also as like an additional question, do you think you'd still stream it or play competitively for it? Mm. So if it never died, right? Like if it just kept going, I would have kept playing it. I probably yeah. would have like lost my job and just played it full time, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, and probably just kept, oh my God, camera. I probably would have just kept creating content for it like forever because yeah. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Like I could get joy out of, any game playing playing it was just so much fun so i would definitely be playing it still streaming it um i think like there's a certain point where i would probably be like yeah i'm done with competitive because oh my god let me tell you i played competitive a bunch of times and i would i don't think i was ever good at it i think i had fun but like i think it was too serious for me and i don't think i just want to like fuck around yeah <laughs> Oh, um and there were just people who were so good or like emerging as being amazing at the game and like mm -hmm. to be honest maybe i would have transitioned over just like to being like a shoutcaster i would have right. probably preferred that yeah. watch the people who are good i get really stressed out mm. like being serious uh for a game so i mean like you know i had like a drink with me every time i was <laughs> Grim, just saying you know <laughs> i mean like i can't oh no uh, that's why i would i would have most of the time not even like video or scrims because just so much performance anxiety honestly right. i'm like don't look at me don't watch me like miss this jump and like they were intense <laughs> they were intense y'all were intense the team that they you were, were on i'll for i will always forget all the names but man oh, like me too. <laughs> it was just yeah, it, it's a lot of pressure, I feel like, to play on a competitive team. Oh my gosh, it was... It Especially was a with lot. a game that's so small. You're so like small. one out of five yeah. teams or however many there are for yeah. such a niche, small community. Yeah, I mean, the, gosh, the amount of teams, they were so tiny. And I remember, like, there were only a few. There was one during the gigantic, like, um, memoriam stream we were playing with, like, SoFetch that I, like... I rolled the footage. Everybody was like, why are you playing this game where you guys get destroyed? And I'm like, just wait. And it was like an epic comeback scrim. It was like what? the coolest moment. Oh, it was amazing. Like, and that was like something that was so unique to Gigantic, right? Like it, it was one of those things where you could be down and then like clash happens. And oh yeah, that's another thing we should have said. Clash, clash. was probably the most, I, I almost forgot huge been, element of the game. over five years yeah <laughs> uh yeah like that was something i'd never seen in a game where the everything got like smaller and like to be honest that size felt right mm -hmm. you know what i mean it was like yes we're all like brawling it's intense it's intimate let's like kill each other uh you can't really run anywhere so clash was like incredible and i remember like it could literally change your game 
you can't summon anything anymore. You can't like everything's like for keeps, and it just it changed everything. Yeah, oh my god, it, it was cool too because like <laughs> I feel like in some games there are direct ways in which they give you comeback like they're like comeback mechanics where they're like take this and like you might be able to win but i feel like (laughs) it was it wasn't exactly like a force-fed comeback mechanic it was just like Mm. if you're down here's an opportunity to where everything's more intense you have to make your decisions more effectively and be smarter about what you're doing but if you do you can come back like really easily like everything yeah. snowballs at, at the in the clash and like oh yeah one wrong move could just get your whole team wiped oh i've lost from winning like no damage toward a guardian yeah. fully lost at clash and then we fully won at clash like yeah. it is it is the craziest thing right yeah uh and then like i remember they took out the middle creature but that middle creature would be the biggest pain in the ass which one it would die it was like right in the middle in uh um, in clash like right what map sanctum uh, falls sanctum falls my fucking least favorite map wow Sorry. that must have been in the beta or something oh they took it out because yeah. that thing would die in two seconds and yeah. it'd be like why did we even have this so like you would try and make sure you didn't have that creature go to clash because it would just die and give them a 20 anyway there was so much interesting like meta things that would happen because of Gigantic was insane. Yeah. <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. So in depth. <sighs> Clash was really good. I, I think You're a really me good mechanic. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay, so moving on a little bit to oh, yeah. the more art style side, uh, mm. because you are an artist and f- you work on games in the art department. Um, <laughs> so, in your opinion, what do you think? Uh, worked really well and like didn't work about the art in gigantic Mm -hmm. okay so i think to be honest like a lot of the um i mean the character designs i have to say obviously one of the best things about it the silhouette (laughs) yeah extremely like like uh, recognizable i think they did a really good job with skins i have a problem Mm. in a lot of games with skins i can't recognize who the character is but Mm. it could because I don't play them as much, but you know, I'm like, who the fuck is this? They all look the same. Yeah. I'm exactly. sorry. <laughs> and I'm not gonna say what game I feel that about, but uh, you know, <laughs> some some do, but this one, like, they were really cognizant of that. They were like, no, every character of ours is very specific. They're made out of these shapes. You will know who it is. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Um, the UI, I would say, is like, I think they did a really good job by the end of it. It was like pretty good and it had this nice minimalness to it which like for me i'm so torn on it because like it was a fantasy game and i wish the ui was more fantasy but it was also really good at like just being out of the way and being like you know (sighs) okay the one thing though the vfx i have i'll never forget a screenshot i took it was on um ghost reef and it was like Vodin, and it was this one patch of sunlight, and there were like five VFX going on, and they were all the same brightness. It was glaringly, blindingly bright, oh. and I was like, "What is happening here? <laughs> what is going on?" So <laughs> I think like the lighting was really strong and gigantic, but like it also hurt it because there was no, there was no like value scale. Mm. It was like. All the VFX were piled on each other. They all had the same look. You don't know which one was friendly, which one was not. It was, like, hard to understand sometimes, like, it, how garbled that stuff got, especially with how bright some of the maps were. Yeah. Ghost Reef, I think, was the worst one. It was just, like, because there was, like, <laughs> just these patches of sunlight where I'm like, I can't see what's happening. <laughs> uh, so I, I would say that, and then, there were moments where the guardians, I think they eventually fixed this, but you couldn't see where their stupid attacks were going. And these attacks would like kill you. You know what I mean? They would like blow you up. And I remember being like, cool. I couldn't see that at all. And I just died to it. Yeah. They would Love like get that. clunky at times, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But a lot of like the character abilities were really good. And mm-hmm. I think they really, you could see where they were going. They made sense. Other than Mozu's old ult that could literally 
if you had it at max charge, could kill an entire team. They eventually changed that. But yeah, I remember death raying an entire team. They all died. I I'm <laughs> lucky I was not around for that. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, I was like this shit. Like the name's accurate, but death like, ray, yeah, for real. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. I think they got a lot of numbers towards the end, but yeah, yeah that, that's what I would say. Like, the VFX, while beautiful and amazing, just had, we're just competing a little bit with all the value stuff. I think that's really hard to get right, though. Yeah. I think, like, a game like League of Legends, actually, I gotta say, their, like, their value scale, they know what's most important in, like, as well in a game like mm-hmm. that. So, eh, gigantic. I... They would have gotten there. <laughs> Do, are they one of the games where like if you had like two characters doing the same ability right like charnox e for example it's like the little circle uh mm. like fire rainstorm were they one of those games that would do like the green circle around the friendly one and the red circle around the enemy one because i feel like that is so <sighs> so confusing Oh my because God. it's like such a thin little line but it's like hey this is a red circle because it's not the nice one it's like the enemy one you know i'll be honest with you i can't remember is i that feel really like <laughs> i feel like it was one of those games maybe i'm thinking of it could be smite though i, I blend the two together a lot up. no no i i feel like like that makes se- total sense yeah. and like a lot of like your your healing abilities you know green circles around you you can understand that but sometimes when things are stacked on top of each other you're like what the fuck is this? i can't tell like, like what i'm bad? walking into yeah yeah so, so sometimes it's hard to know and then like you know if you're um god i don't know there's just so many vfx the game in, in yeah. any given time so it was oh wait the worst thing ever storm drakes let's just talk about storm drakes for like five seconds worst thing in the game i remember being on a map where stern drakes were on every point and i literally could not stop moving because they would kill me if i didn't <laughs> I'm like why is this a thing and their effects oh. were intense like Insane. the light like they would jump up in the air and their lightning would spread everywhere yeah I the drakes were one. yeah the drakes were really intense but you're right. Okay, I see. I had a, I know, a gameplay. Yeah. I see red ring around bad effects. So they did do that. Which, but- admittedly, again, not uh, as someone who's not an artist or a game designer, it's not like you can like turn the enemy ability red or something and the good right. one green. So it's like I don't know right. how to work around that. But sometimes it'd be like, man, you'd walk no. into something and be like, this is the friendly one, and it'd be like, oh, there goes half my HP. <laughs> like, yeah yeah because they could stack on each other yeah. like and there wasn't a good like way to show but yeah i mean they tried yeah that's just a hard one to navigate i feel like it's a really hard one to navigate but i i yeah that i just wish that they toned down some of the lighting on the maps to make it like more obvious sometimes yeah. because it was just like everything was so bright you're like what the fuck is going on what am i getting hit by sometimes <laughs> Yeah, and then it was really hard to understand as well your stamina that getting out of stamina was because you were in combat. I found mm. like they tried like that there was a symbol that was like the the um the cross swords that was like you're in combat. Sometimes I remember being in combat I'm like how? Like there's, there's nobody around me. Here. Like yeah. what the fuck? And then like you realized, "Oh, it's because I've been jumping." Because oh. I was out of stamina, and it takes longer to come back. And I had no idea about that. I remember, oh, like, there was so nothing true. teaching me that. Yeah. And you you just, like, awkwardly found it out. So, man, the game had so many tiny little things yeah, that they, were, like, so hard to understand. <laughs> tiny little, like, mechanics that you had to know, or oh, else you'd get punished for not knowing camera. them. Please. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, I think a lot of games do. Um, I will say, though, that they had a pretty good kill recap Mm -hmm. um it was pretty nice to know exactly why i died uh some games don't don't do it how much damage everything did and all that so you can like really learn i remember learning like upgrade level three focus killed me and i was like i didn't have no idea that much yeah yeah right (laughs) so that's actually another thing actually um like in the game it would have been nice to know damages and numbers and there was nothing indicating that Mm. in like hero pages so as like 
a, a person in general playing this game, I want to know, like, how much health do I have? How much damage do I do max upgrade? Um, it was, I just wish they had a better system for it in the game. Because I remember having to go outside to do, of the game a lot of the time, to do, like, a builder mm. and, like, experiment. Because it was kind of tedious to do it uh, when they eventually had that, like, practice arena. Which, to be honest, that, that thing kind of showed up pretty late. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it so, did, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a complaint that I have with actually a lot of games, is I wish that they had just, like, a 12-page document that was, like, here's how much character each square of health is. Here's how much, or here's how much, like, the numbers of every single thing is in the match so that you know exactly like well this thing does this much squares because it's this many health or whatever right yeah, but gigantic yeah. especially like they didn't really tell you many details it'd just be like well this cracks your armor or this gives you a speed buff or this yeah. buffs your health a little bit sometimes yeah. it was a little vague of like what exactly was going on yeah i mean you still i still have no idea how much health trip has like honestly, like I have no idea. Like, Doesn't what does she that have mean? Three squares, however much. Yeah, like like <laughs> right. I, the squares. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how much <laughs> I, that is though. <laughs> yeah, it was so like a lot of the hidden information. But man, I do. I I actually really do like how that uh the UI looked at the end of it. Like that like middle thing that they made. Oh, it's really cool. I agree. I remember being so mad that those parentheses bars were gone, but then being like, okay, I kind of like this better. <laughs> they like, were look- so bad. I Like, I watch old gameplay, and it's just like, it's so <laughs> confused. I-, I feel like, in theory, it'd make more sense because they're in the middle of the screen. Yeah. But the fact that they were separate from your abilities, that was the problem. You have to look at two yeah. different places to see your health, stamina, and your cooldowns. Exactly. It was just like, like a UX designer now. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You had no idea that they even like were remotely related to each right, other. Right. So they did it much better with that, uh, with the second pass. I mean, they had like a really, they had a pretty good UI designer. I also yeah. followed him. Uh, I stalked everybody on the team. It's fine. So did I. There's, there's no shame. <laughs> this is a safe place. There's no shame <laughs> <Thank> here. God. <laughs> Aww. Um. Okay, so I we talked a little bit about your competitive uh, era being on a competitive team. Yeah. So I guess in general, like, if there's anything else to share of, like, what it was like, um, you can explain that. But also, I guess just even outside of yourself, do you think that the game could have had a long-lasting competitive scene? Do you think it would have grown really large? Do you think it, like, the game's depth could have kept going? if the game would have stuck around longer? Yeah, sure. Okay, so so the first part of that, like, competitive team, I basically gone on one by sheer, like, being annoying. I was just like, hey! Put I me play on the, the team! Game. Can I? Yeah, like, I was a part of a few, and I was always interested in, like, trying to get better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would just bother, you know, Team Apex, can I look at your vaults? Can I understand what you're doing that I'm not doing? And it just became this, like, cool hangout. And I remember I actually met my full team at PAX, and it was awesome. And I mean, like... That's cool. I'm still friends with all of them. (laughs) Um, It was just, like, such a big moment for all of us, I guess. Like, you know, we were okay at the moment. We were having fun. But you know what? I think if the game was... (sighs) Okay. I will be honest, there was a point of Gigantic, right, where people started falling off, and it it didn't feel the same way, like, the attitude towards it was kind of like, maybe the the players who have been around for a long time are starting to bully mm. players who are coming in, like, surf accounts were, like, huge and stuff, because there are, I remember there's a big problem with, like, queue times, stuff like that. Anyway. If you I'm were a top player, that. you'd queue for a long time. I was in queue for like half an hour once and yeah. I was like, I am I'm done with this. And like, like smurfing became like a thing and I'm not the first one who did it. Oh, I did it. I, and I wasn't even a top player. I mean, yeah. no, uh, but it's like, if you've been playing for a while, it would just mess up. It was, it was, it was bad for all of us. And mm-hmm. like, I think it gave us like an, a weird attitude. Like some of the people have been playing for a long time too. And I think it's really sad. Like, I think if, there had never been a population problem of the game 
that the game could have definitely kept going and could have kept having competitive teams because there were a lot of like good players emerging and making their own teams. And it was like, great, there's more teams than ever. But, okay, I will call them out. I will call them out. It's okay because I've met them all in real life. Team Apex. Okay. Great people. Yeah. Awesome people. I've met them all. But they had a weird ego thing. Oh, yeah. And it was like, we have to be better than everybody. It's like, yes, you are. Great. Whatever. But, like, they just didn't want to split that team up. And, like, maybe make more teams. And, like, you know, help the community grow competitively. Like, they were all amazing players. They could have each started a team and, like, take... taking that team to like be amazing right like maybe if we were all like in the mindset of let's like expand this on our own we could have all like done that and came together and thought about that but i think like there was this weird ego thing where we were all like we're really good let's just be better than everybody for no reason and like not better but like let's be like a group together um and not help anyone else like (laughs) So it just became this like thing where I think we were like weird and precious about where we stood and it kind of like hurt. I think it hurt the community. So I think Mm. like if we had woken up and been like, it doesn't matter. There's literally no ranking system in the game. There's (laughs) fake on a website (laughs) that we could have like, like, you know, changed it. But I think like maybe we just weren't in the right place. Like, Maybe we were all too young at that at that time. I don't yeah. know. Maybe we had never all been like good at a game. But right. I think, you know, I, I also like I wish I did things differently too. Like I always remember being like, Oh, I want to talk to them about doing that. And then I just never did because why are they gonna say yes? Like Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I, don't know. I didn't think they would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um so I think like Honestly, it felt like it was on all of us to make that happen, and we just didn't, and it sucks. But you never know. Like, if it kept going, there would have been more people who were just amazing at it Mm -hmm. uh, that just kicked all of our asses. And, like, so I think, uh, you know, give a game more time, and, yeah, good people are going to, like, show up, right? Yeah. Um, So I basically the the theme of this is I blame Microsoft, so. (laughs) Right. Right. The big bad guy behind oh, the scenes. Man. Yeah, it's so it's so tough because like honestly us as like people who are I guess like prominent in the community, we, we could have done more to like really help it. And I just don't think we were like ready to do that or knew how or you know. So I always kinda like regret it. I'm always yeah. like, Oh, there could have been something more I did or Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that's actually really interesting, just going back a little bit, the point that you brought up about smurfing. Because, yeah. again, as somebody who's not a top player, but I took the game probably casually at the most competitive level I could, if that makes sense. Like, I joined a team, oh, yeah. but then I quit the team because I was like, I, you know, I don't know <laughs> if this is for me. But, yeah. like, I Definitely. still really, really wanted to do well. I wanted to have all five people on voice chat. I wanted it to be, like, I wanted to win. I wanted to do well. And when smurfing became a thing, uh-huh. not only are you playing, like, with lower level people, but, like, most of these people are brand new. Like, they have no idea what they're doing. And it's yeah. just, like, I've been playing the game for 400 hours and my only way to get into a game is to smurf my account so I can play with newbies and then get frustrated as hell at the game because nobody knows what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, I don't want to play this game anymore, you know? Oh, I think that was a huge problem for a lot of people. Everyone had a smurf because of that reason. Or, like, multiple smurfs. Yeah. And, like, it got pretty bad. And, like, sometimes the funniest thing was sometimes you would be against a smurf and you're like, I know exactly who that is. <laughs> it'd be like their it'd be like their username two or something. Yeah. yeah, and you'd be like, okay. Playing like the character in a way, you're like, I recognize that. Person. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like the worst part was, I guess we all did it, and mm-hmm. it just like we couldn't stop doing it. And 
or like you know streaming i i know a million times probably every time i played a stream snipe and whatever and sometimes like like it's okay to lose but like i would lose every time and i'm mm. like all right like losing every time never feels good no matter what right yeah and so i think like maybe we had to do that less and we all did it <laughs> yeah no <laughs> i agree era, so <laughs> i agree I yeah. mean, kind of desperate times, though, you know, like you wanted no. to play the game and not wait 30 minutes for a queue. So it's not exactly yeah. the greatest thing to do. But also at the same time, it's like, yeah. what are you going to do when hey, it makes me feel slightly better to know, like to hear somebody else did it, too. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <here. laughs> right. Yeah. And I remember there was like this awkward thing where, God, I. I don't know what happened, but Motika told me that they not to play my account because they had unlocked it. I had all these characters, mm -hmm. not characters, but all these skins that were not in the game. Uh. Uh, so I was like, okay, I can't play this. What if they see it? Like, so I just, I was like, I don't know if I can play my main account. Anymore. Wow. That's crazy. The last stream I ever did, I just showed them off. I'm like, well, whatever. Like, <laughs> the game's dead. Oh, that's, um, that's so yeah. cool. I'm I'm going to talk to uh, Sofetch, actually, on Wednesday. Um, Tell me to say hi. I will. Uh, I'm going to talk to him a lot about the farewell stream. Because for me, <laughs> which I won't talk about too much, it actually kind of makes me emotional a little bit. But I stopped playing probably like three or four months before the game shut down. I never watched oh. the farewell stream. I never did any of that. Because it was just too fucking sad. I couldn't be around. I couldn't handle it. But I, I just over the years had forgotten that that stream ever happened. And I just watched it when doing research for the video I'm making. And I was like, oh, my God. Like watching all the raid stuff, watching the new, the new maps that they had planned, all the heroes that they had planned. Like there yeah. were heroes that were damn near finished all the skins that they had planned. It was just like, man, they they still had yeah. so much to offer. It's crazy. So that's cool that you just like, you know, towards the end there, you got the little privilege of having all those skins and stuff. <laughs> like, all these. And yeah. Then I, yeah. Even though you like, couldn't show them off. So fast showed them all off in the stream, which was freaking yeah. cool. I wanted to play Jericho so bad. <sighs> I know. Like the, oh Jericho was cool. Javash was really oh. cool. The guy with the big staff and the sand. And the oh, so cool. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, the art. I mean, no one could ever deny the art. Like, one of the best. Then, like, Zenobia's tentacle animation. Crazy. Was nuts. Like, I've never yeah. seen anything like that before. Crazy. Just, I love that character, too. I yeah. just, oh, my God. But I'm glad you got, you, you watched that video. That was, that was. It was a yeah, pretty, it was, it was a pretty wholesome experience. I think I healed enough after this last five years to enjoy it. I was like, this yeah, is awesome. It only took five years. Yeah, it only took five years of therapy. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel it. I get it. Like, yeah, I, I cried my eyes out when that game was finally gone yeah. and hearing it was shutting down. It was just, you know, it always makes you just wonder, like, did we do enough? to help its success and ugh, it's tough yeah. because we can only do so much but like man we had a really good time like i'm so glad it existed in my life because what an inspiration i reference it Truly. every fucking time i talk about my favorite game yeah remember this dead game gigantic <laughs> huh? they're like no what what is that <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my god the moth came back oh, oh no sorry but um <laughs> Yeah, and they look it up and they're like, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And look off into the distance. Seriously. Well, I guess speaking on uh, characters, because we talked a little bit about characters that were never released. Yeah. What was your favorite and least favorite character, if you had to choose? I guess factor in both playing as and playing against, if you want. Uh, or design-wise or whatever. All of the above. Uh, okay. Favorite design, Taito the Swift. My Such a character. good design. Amazing design. Used to be my actual favorite character to play for a long time. And then I discovered Trip was really fun. Trip had some of the most fun movements with kits that they like modified. I remember uh, Trip used to have a shield that used to reflect 
on her kick, so you could reflect projectiles. Oh my god! I, def- reflect, I remember that. Sorry. Yeah, like I deflected a Sven jump pad once, so I got to use it. Oh, it that's not- amazing! It was so cool. It was like what? And then they got rid of that because Trip could just destroy HK, and you can't mm. have that. Yeah, you can't have that, right? <laughs> and then like, Trip could teleport. Oh, what a cool character. She was so much fun. Playing against a good one, not so fun. Nope. Uh, but I know, like, I freaking enjoyed playing her. And then, obviously, my least favorite had to be Amani. I hated Amani because I love the puff. The puff was a great design. Character design, awesome. But playing against a good Amani on Sanctum Falls, Worst experience of my life. We're all just yeah. sitting there waiting to see what happens. And if you're the assassin, so much pressure mm-hmm. to do something. Or your your sniper's got to be good, right? So definitely hate Imani. You know what? To be honest, close second, I freaking hate Paco. Because as an assassin, Paco oh, yeah. shut you down. With the snowball so and the old. Paco? Yeah. Oh, my God. I hated it. So... You know, those those were my favorites. Actually, my third favorite. God, this is a hard one. It's kind of a toss up between Zenobia and I found Oru to be so much fun. Oru was awesome. What a cool kit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much fun. Oh my god. I just remember one of my final games as Oru destroying an enemy trip. A good one. And feeling really good about it. <laughs> That's a good feeling. Oh, like, yeah, you're like, so I'm gonna lock that away. I'm keeping that oh, yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what a good, what a good experience. And then coming in number four, I guess it's definitely Charnock because Corgi dragons forever. I never thought about that, but that totally makes sense. He is like a Corgi dragon. <laughs> yeah, he's got like the little waddle and everything. That's oh, my so god. funny. And I mean, I was always like a big like fan of like dragons in general uh so i mean you know i love gren's design i love charnog and especially kit i mean it was so easy but it was just like really fun to get that synergy going with your like meteors and your fire oh my god you ever like like cue into a bunch of people and use your ult as they get stunned by your meteor i never played charnog that much because i was terrible at him but i know exactly what you're talking about Oh my god. That's cool. Uh, this is hard because so many like I actually played a lot of them cuz Voden Voden's up there too. I mean Voden was one of the coolest looking characters in my opinion with that little swishy tail and that little like prancy walk. Great animations. Like, Amazing kit. Yeah. Literally one of the most fun characters to play. I wasn't really good at him, but Really like slithery, sneaky, gets all over the place. That yeah. character could get in and out and be invisible. Mm-hmm. What an insane character. Like the clone swap. I remember oh, there were yeah. games where we had to like literally be like, you can't play this build. Because mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was just too hard to deal with. I think he used to be able to like tell like put it somewhere like further away. And Oh really? And it was like impossible to find it. Like you A could good... go like place it up somewhere and place it up and God, maybe I'm like remembering wrong, but I remember having the hard time playing with against Votem. Oh, what a dick. He was also a jerk, okay? Like lore wise, Votem was really? a jerk. Yeah. Most of the characters were assholes, I think. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Amani rings pretty true to me as a difficult player uh character to play against. Like so I think as a Wu player mostly myself, like Wu is perfect against a character like Amani. You know, you want an assassin to take down someone like Amani, but a good Amani would just like they'd use the bomb that pushes you away or whatever it was, and they'd go invisible, and you're just like, okay, well I'm fucked. What do I do? Sit underneath like Laren's paws and, and just like, snipe really? you for days. Yeah. yeah, so annoying. Yeah, and like they're everything Amani could do was just like it would hurt so much. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the people who played her were usually super good. You got head- <laughs> You would get headshots, too, right? Like, you got... Uh, um... You used to be able to. I think they took that out. And wow. uh, do you remember when they used to be able to? You used to be able to shoot people coming off of the airship. I remember seeing many videos. While you're people... flying down? 
hitting them? Yeah, and cliff gaming them. That's amazing. Like, that's fucked up. They should have kept that. <laughs> that's amazing. Someone just posting up on the side, like as you're respawning and just killing you. That's so funny. That's so goofy. I love it. <laughs> oh, what a game. Yeah, I mean, it was like one of the games that didn't have too many snipers going on, which is why I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, because I mean, I'm not a big shooter person, but I love Gigantic because it has well, that mix. Everything. yeah i think that's something that's really cool about the game too design wise is that i don't want to say because off the top of my head i don't actually know but i would say i feel like most of the characters were melee a lot of them were at melee. least half of them were melee it so had, it's like, like mo amount. most hero shooters are mostly shooters and like yeah. a couple of melee characters but yeah gigantic had so much variety of melee characters it was crazy yeah. A lot of thrown projectiles or like mid-range a lot of mid-range characters mm -hmm. uh yeah. which was the best which is why amani was pain yeah she was Imani a pain screw you guys <laughs> i love all the characters gigantic but <sighs> what's one that i just i feel like maybe i suppressed it in the back of my mind because there's just a character that i can't stand amani was up there I feel like the assassins were the worst, though. Like, a good Ramsey really, really hurt. Oh, Ramsey. Because just the infinite dodging. Or maybe, like, a good HK was frustrating, too, because that character was stupid as hell. Beckett, when they oh. took the third. See, I love Beckett, though. I Like, Beckett was my ranged character. If I had to uh, play ranged, I'd play Beckett. And, oh, my God, that character was busted. That oh, so the, the flamethrower cannon and the cracked grenade armor. Oh Just my no god! To hit. Like yeah. that character was nuts, and like nothing, mostly nothing you can do about it too. When she would just go for like the wound. I mean, yeah. yeah oh my god! Yeah. Turn. Yeah, like what a frustrating character. And like as a woo, you had it was your job to grab her out of the air, but pull still her out of the sky. Right, right. Yep. Like and it wasn't easy. If if she was paying attention to you, it's like she dodges and then. Well, I got to wait now for her to come down. Oh, because you can, if you jetpack, you could probably dodge in the air, huh? So that Wu can't grab you if you're like paying attention. That's crazy. Yeah, never once changed the damage of HK and Becca. They were always like <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> the whole time through. Oh, they were annoying for sure. I mean, I will say that maybe it was just because I wasn't fighting them as directly as like you know in Amani. yeah um or, anyway sorry so you obviously streamed the game a lot you played competitively a lot and you were involved in like you went to PAX and you went to events and all that and you interacted with the community a lot what would you say the community was like for gigantic in i guess both a positive and a negative but mostly like I personally remember it being a pretty unique community, but I'm curious to see what you thought because you had a lot more involvement. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, gosh. The community overall was amazing. I think, like, we were pretty tight-knit. Uh, like, I feel like most people knew other people that were playing it or streaming it and maybe hung out in, like, Discord or something like that um or streams a lot of people would hang out in streams and i feel like i just feel like we all kind of knew each other maybe maybe even maybe not sometimes by like name directly but we all kind of knew like who the streamers were who was like good players or whatever mm -hmm. and um honestly like from the very beginning i think gigantic always had community. i mean back in the day Motiga used to host like lore sessions where they would sit down and tell us little stories from the game. Like they used to just do that on their own time, their own streams. Like, I mean, how does that not foster a crazy community who's obsessed with everything yeah. you do? <laughs> um, so I think we were spoiled in a lot of ways. Like they, they spent a lot of time trying to make things for us. And I remember being at these events and, being like thinking i'm so smart oh i have suggestions for the game it's like they know <laughs> they know what they have to put in time and whatever 
Uh, <laughs> God, we must have sounded so, <laughs> so annoying to them. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I just, I will always miss like the tight knit community. And I think in a way, like it, it, towards the end, it got kind of like toxic. I don't know about you, but I felt a lot I agree. of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. because it, there was such a small pool of us. We had nothing to do, to do, but prove we were good against the same people over and over again. And it made us like frustrated and long queue times made us frustrated. I mean, there's nothing quite like streaming the game. You get stream, stream sniped and lose every game. And then you're in a queue for half an hour. I remember yeah. seeing people playing other games while waiting for queue. And that's when you knew it was kind of like, we were all kind of unhappy. Yeah. Um, Plus we're, we we're always like punching up too yeah. because of the like rivalries between different games. It's like, it yeah. just fostered kind of a negativity. I think. Yeah. And it's, it's like really, it's like really unfortunate because, and I think like I had never really cared that much about winning until I played gigantic. Mm -hmm. And then I started caring about winning. And I remember having like community games and like being mad that I lost. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> like what the hell? So I think like, you know, moments like that were kind of like the beginning of the end, I think. Cause it was like, like when you're not having fun anymore, I think it's a problem. Like maybe yeah. we just needed to like step back. But if mm -hmm. we did, like it felt like we weren't supporting the game in a way we thought. We Especially could, so. like you, because you would rack in a ton of viewers in your stream. That must have been pressure, you know. It was definitely pressure. It was pressure to like do well and like you know, obviously streaming is trying to be entertaining. And yeah. I remember there were times where I was just like, I just want to play gigantic. Like, can you guys like go away so I can yeah. play with <laughs> yeah. I would do that. I would like record like games like alone, like no commentary, just playing. And it's like maybe that was like a sign for me to like stop. Yeah. But you know, it was just such a fun game. It was hard to to stop. And I think like in a way that that led to the the kind of toxicity, right? Because we had to just keep being good, keep like getting better and just it didn't really like help uh so that's so sad oh that makes me so sad but knowing you also that then i'm not crazy because it did definitely feel a little like angry by the end yeah we're all mad we we're mad our game wasn't doing well and we were mad in general but <laughs> there weren't like a lot of features coming out and you know it was it was slow we had to wait for a long time for anything so they we were felt like very <laughs> there, were, there was like a month in between updates wasn't there yeah it, it was taking really long. and i remember yeah. like when the tutorial came out we were like well all of us here don't need that we played a million times yeah <laughs> but it's out <laughs> <laughs> we're like what about ranked yeah I remember right. that forever but it's like you know oh well <laughs> we tried <laughs> Oh, I like um, to think of the good times instead. <laughs> oh yeah, it was mostly good times. I I think near the end it just it got hard because mm -hmm. I don't know. Every time an update would come out, it would just come out so slow. There'd be which you know, it's mm -hmm. not a criticism. It's just how it was, unfortunately. Yeah. But okay. it'd come out. It'd get an influx of players, and then. I mean, even as someone who streamed the game back then a lot, like I wouldn't have a lot of viewers, but I'd get new players every day who'd be like, what is this game? I want to try it. Like, explain it to me. And I'd be like, yeah. And then the players would inevitably drop. And then it was just like, ugh. it was just like, it was like taking care of a child. <laughs> and I wasn't yeah. even a developer of the game. I wasn't even involved in it. But yeah. It, but you were, because you were trying, you were like, yeah. basically like promoter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, I just think Work. like for anyone who streamed it or played competitively or was heavily involved with the community in any way, it was just like it got really, really hard <laughs> to like keep yeah. a positive attitude about it. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think it just it made everyone negative over time, but there were tons of good times. There was tons of of fun, and every update show was so exciting. Everyone was so stoked. To see so fetch and Amanda, like, yeah. oh, it was just the best feeling. Oh man, 
Yeah, they were a good pair to do that. Like, yeah. no matter what, um, sorry, I almost said his real name. Sofesh <laughs> is amazing and one of the most committed people I've ever met. Oh my God, yeah. No, I mean. Still posts on Twitter like oh, yeah. every every two weeks every just po- a lot. yeah just post things about like this is what gigantic would have had in store and you're like thanks for the depression the dose of depression <laughs> yeah i know thanks a lot yeah <laughs> you know, i'm sad but also slightly like that slightly made my day better so yeah <laughs> yeah um well on maybe a less depressing note if gigantic did come back today and things have simmered down between the rivalries of all these hero shooters kind of not a dead genre but you know it's in the background compared to where it was battle royals kind of take over and yeah do you think it would have a chance if it came out today i guess in the state that it was in Mm. um one of the things i kind of factor in is like unreal engine 3 is what the game was built on and it's (sighs) old now it's very old it's a tough one that is such a tough one. I think like, I think they'd have to do a lot of work to get it to be competitive with what's out there. I yeah. mean, we kind of talked about like why it failed, and like if it came out again, I feel like it would just have the old community around it. Like it would be like a cult. Like we're basically a cult. Let's be honest. Oh yeah. And it it's been five like, years, and it's all we think about. It's yeah. yeah. It would have like the cult would come back, but like. It would take a while to really see any differences. Like, no new people are going to play that game. It's still just as complicated. Yeah. Um, so if they were able to maybe change it to make it more approachable and maybe spend some time upgrading, because I feel like they'd have to now. Oh, gosh. The only way that game would be playable would be to make custom lobbies, spectating, like, all that stuff. Give it a fresh coat of paint. Bring that stuff out there that competes with what's out there, and maybe people would look at it. Give it a deathmatch mode as the main mode. You yeah. know, if if it had that, which I I doubt that would be very hard for them to make. I don't. I have no idea what the state of the code behind the game is. Right. But you know, if they were able to do that, I think they could get people to play that game because it is way different looking than anything out there right now even still even still i yeah. mean it still stands out as one of the cool games um but they'd have to find like a new way to promote right a new way to market it like what is gigantic exactly right. uh, and i think like that was one of the harder things to explain to anyone you were telling me about the game it was like you fight monsters that is true <laughs> You upgrade, you kill each other, bro. You know, it's like it gets like get it fast. So I think like if they were able to fully define those in bite-sized pieces, that game could be successful. But it would take work. Yeah, I again not a game designer. Don't have the merits to speak on it. But the Unreal Engine three thing is like huge because they could release the game how it was and just update it. I mean. Like, to bring up another example, Smite again. I don't know what engine it runs on, but that game is old. That oh. game was developed in, like, 2010, 2011. Like, it's been around for a long time. Yeah. So, it's, like, it's definitely possible, right? Because people still play uh-huh. Smite. It still gets crazy updates. But the thing is, is, like, if they did upgrade to, like, Unreal 4, Unreal 5, they'd have to rebuild the game. And they don't yeah. have Motiga anymore. The team doesn't exist anymore. So it's like, could you really make gigantic again? Or Good it's question. a it's a really hard like choice, I feel like, if if Perfect no. World or now Gearbox would ever revive it or bring no, it back. Crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, like it makes you wonder what a big studio would see in something like that. Like, is that franchise worth bringing back? Like, do they think like the player base was big enough to merit spending, you know, possibly like tens of thousands of dollars like on this game probably millions Um, maybe probably millions of dollars yeah (laughs) it's it's a really tough one and like gigantic doesn't really like fit what i imagine like gearbox is even like portfolio is like you know i mean i'd love to see (laughs) if they like modify gigantic 
that would look like Could that would imagine? be wild yeah. <laughs> be crazy. but yeah um god i mean we all want to see it come back but i'll be honest i think gigantic's cursed oh i think i think it's cursed i think like you know we we all want to see it come back but like what we loved about it was so long ago and but there's never going to be anything like it so yeah. it's like we always hope it comes back so yeah. I hate to be like that person because I mean, obviously I wanted it to come back. (laughs) Um, Ugh, but yeah, that's. I don't think it's coming back. I'd love it too, though. I'd still play it, not not the same amount. Yeah, of course. You've got to control. You've got to control now on the yeah. I I mean, like once Gigantic was done, I stopped streaming. I was like, okay, this. This is, I'm done. No right. more. So I had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay now, though. Um, but yeah. Okay. Sad. Well, as the final question that I have, um, I wanted to briefly ask you about Project Stamina, which was, sure. for the people who don't know, a spiritual successor made by fans to create a game very much like Gigantic that could it have been a second chance, essentially, for people who loved Gigantic, loved Motiga, and you worked directly on it, not as a streamer, but you were the head of the art team? Yeah, I was the art director. Yeah. What a title. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I just wanted to ask, like, what was that like working as the art director? Um and you know kind of the experience of it creating characters doing all that stuff oh yeah sure i mean it was it was pretty wild honestly at first we really had no idea what we were getting into um i felt like like we wanted to make something that felt like gigantic but at first actually we weren't going to do the style of gigantic we were going to do something way easier quote unquote oh my god moth okay but there's a second moth now. Um, <laughs> sorry. But, you know, after a while, kind of, we were like, you know what? What people really loved about Gigantic, I mean, it was a while, right? Like, it, it had its very specific identity. So in the community itself, like, I'm not exactly a character art. Um, I, I, I do, like, concept stuff. I do more UI stuff. So we had some really talented artists join us that, we were able to direct to do that style. And it, it, it wasn't right away. It actually took a while to really get into it. But we eventually got in our groove. And um, I was, oh, my God, let me tell you. This, this Project Stamina thing, it was basically a part-time job. I'm not kidding. Oh, like, my God. It was like every time I was not at work, I was working on this. Wow. And it was unpaid. It was extreme. Like all our just energy went into this. Like we really cared a lot. And I'm not saying, like, you know, whatever they're doing now, good for them. But it was every week the art team would meet and I would review all their stuff and we would be like, oh, this isn't good. This isn't gigantic enough or this is. <laughs> and we would really like work on defining the characters. And eventually, you know what? I think they really got to that gigantic feel i was really really happy i mean we had the craziest artists like um kezi was one of the craziest artists i've ever worked with he matched the gigantic style um like perfectly tart was another one who's now at riot Crazy. incredible artist. like all of them men amazing like these artists were really good at taking feedback and we i mean it, it would take like a month or so to get the character to the state we were like yeah this is like this feels like it would be in gigantic wow so it was it was pretty wild and we were trying to work within our own kind of boundaries and world that we were making that was like gigantic but a little different it was almost like you know how gigantic had some characters that felt like they didn't quite like go together <laughs> mm, like an example well. what's an example uh, oh gosh an example was kind of like like god do you remember roland like oh yeah roland didn't really feel like he belonged like, yeah he was like a safari like i'm the jumanji he hunter. looked like an ex- oh, yeah <laughs> like an explorer yeah with a big old like, like cartoony gun 
Yeah. Yeah, like why would he be hanging out with a frog guy and like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it was it was just like it, he looked very like human y. Yeah. Where like Beckett looked a little less like she looked a little like more styly. Mm-hmm. Like Bonnie had this puff, she kinda had this like look to her. And then there was Roland, which they took out. Uh, but I was like, this character does not like where do these like animal people and weird there's a demon man <laughs> and like there's no real lore connecting these guys. And that was totally fine because they were all cool in their own way. Visually, you didn't really need to know anything about them. But, like, we wanted to make sure ours felt like that. Um, I mean, we even made, like, Goliaths were, like, our guardians. And Cool. I tried to solve, like, the problem I had with UI, which was, like, not understanding that there's three phases to the fight. And I felt pretty damn good about coming up with that. But to be honest with you, it really just... It evolved from being like something that felt like was ours to being very much just this is gigantic too. Uh, like it is the style, it is a lot of the themes, and you know it always made me wonder how the devs of Gigantic felt about that because mm-hmm. like like we were kind of ripping off their game. Mm. <laughs> um, so you know I. I'm so proud, though, that we were able to match that style because it wasn't easy at all. It's a very hard style. I mean, following incredible artists. uh, But, I mean, we had really good, amazing artists that would just, I mean, they had to deal with me for, like, uh, these meetings were, like, three hours long. Let me tell you. They they were long every week. (laughs) It was like, here's homework for the week. Um, So they deserve so much credit. I mean, they would show up to every fucking meeting. And, um, God, I mean, we had so many plans. I... Anyway, I don't know that part. <laughs> but it was, it was really cool. Like, I can't believe, I feel very lucky that I was able to, like, work on that. And, you know, I made all the presentations for, for the streams and all that stuff. And it was fun being able to, like, be in the spotlight one well, more time. I mean, for what it's worth, like, even though you guys obviously were trying to replicate a style... It didn't, from an outsider, it never felt like Gigantic 2.0. Like, it felt inspired by, but, man, especially the character designs were so cool. Like, they were so good. I think you guys did an amazing job. And, like, the stuff that they showed off of, like, the few, like, map designs that we got to see, um, I think we kind of saw some abilities a little bit. Just, like, yeah. some characters had animations running through the world, stuff like that. Like, all that stuff was so well done. But uh, I just imagine that it is really hard to do when you're not being paid, you have a full-time job already, <laughs> and you're trying uh, to replicate something that is, like, top-notch quality, like Gigantic was, you know? Yeah, it was it was crazy. And, I mean, like, we, we had one programmer. And oh, he was, my God. It, like, imagine making the this insane huge game and you're just one person like he had to wow. like implement all the stuff and he was amazing at it and yeah i mean everybody spent so much so many hours on it and um yeah i mean not being paid really shows like we 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 fucking wanted this shit <laughs> but okay tell me what's your favorite character design project Sam? let's hear oh god the names i i can't remember the names <laughs> what they look like vaguely. why because you're trying to get me to pick a favorite because someone designed each one huh no 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 i'm just curious <laughs> i'm just curious i really really liked the um i think the two big boys i liked a lot i liked the purple guy who had the little minion the guy in the knight's armor nice so cool and then I, mean, I really liked the tall red guy with the mace and the bunny face or whatever he was. Such a good design. R4? Yeah. Really? That's Such my character! Oh my god. Such a good design, for real. I mean, they all looked great, but I think those two, those two specifically, I was like, wow, this is like standout stuff. Like, these look oh great. Oh my god. I mean, clearly inspired by Taito the Swift, right? Um, 100%. Now that you say that, now I... Now definitely. <laughs> the ma- yeah, I I actually have a um an illustration that Kezi did of R four. He's standing on his mace. It's fucking amazing. I should take a picture so you can see it. But definitely. it's like one of my favorite things. Like like that looks like gigantic to me, and it was just like well inspired. But it's like it has that vibe. Oh, that makes me so happy. And 
Geist was like our reverse Ashlyn. Yeah, um, that's kind of the vibe. <laughs> See, that's what I mean is like it felt inspired, but it felt yeah. like it was its own thing. Like it, oh, it definitely came from your brain and not just being a replicant, you know? It was very cool. That is so cool. And he started off really dark. We had mm. him like, have, he had like spears and shit out of him. And we were like, this feels a little like fucked up. Like, yeah. <laughs> It could be fucked up, but like he shouldn't look like right. Agony. <laughs> um, so that that's so cool. That makes me really happy. And uh, yeah, it was. I will. I will always think back on just how committed everybody was on that, and that was an incredible, crazy time in my life. Where I was really worried. Where I was like, Will the community like this? Will they realize I suck at art? Will that, you know, everything like where you're like constantly worried and freaking out. Um, but yeah, so good team, amazing people. I'm hoping that they are all doing amazing, doing their own thing uh, at this point. But oh, <laughs> so cool. Anyway. Well, I super <laughs> appreciate you talking to me. I guess it's kind um, of a final thing. You worked at high res for a while, right? Oh, and yeah you just left to join a new team if you mm -hmm. want to share what you're working on uh, i mean what you can say what you're working on don't sure. want to step on toes <laughs> yeah sure um so right now i'm working at this this startup called sprocket games it's like these Devin kenny lee who worked on gigantic is oh really one of the artists there. yeah cool i mean i i basically was like what's Devin up to what's the hell is this company let me ask if they're hiring and I got the job somehow. Uh, <laughs> but there are just these insane vets from like mostly from Riot, actually. Uh, it's so weird. They all know each other. And I'm like, I've never worked there. You're I'm like over here. Wiggling your way oh, in. Uh, uh, hey. Um, <laughs> but I can't, I can't talk about the game yet, but it is going to be interesting. It's going to be something uh, big, I think. Oh, can you I, <laughs> I don't want i won't pry too much obviously but can you <laughs> share what platform it'll be on oh um hmm. gosh what can i say because i guess that whittles down a little like is it a mobile game is it a pc game gosh I can't if you can't say that. that's totally i fine. can't say but okay. i would say when it's out I'll let you know. I think it's a okay. while from now, so I can't. Gotcha. I really can't say much, but I want to. Trust me, I really do. <laughs> well, okay, so what position are you working at Sprocket? Sure. Uh, so my title is a kind of crazy title for me. It's senior visual designer. Wow. Ooh, it sounds so fancy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, really? This is my title? That's sick. Um, That's great. So I'm. I'm doing a lot of like the UX work and basically all of the UI visual work. And I get to work with their artists who are just fucking amazing. Um, I wish I could say more. They're just so early on yeah. that I can't, but when it comes out, I'll let you know. Cool. Uh, and maybe you'll be able to play it. Maybe beta. We'll see. We'll see. Basically it all, it all hinges on, um, uh, will it happen? Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> life so we'll see yeah. uh but yeah yeah well, sorry that's, cool. that's totally fine that's great though i'm glad to hear it well oh thank you again well, i appreciate this conversation hopefully if gigantic ever comes back we can get a match in <laughs> oh, please, that would be great i'm yeah. sure we've played against each other at some oh, point i'm in sure our lives. many times <laughs> yeah many times i've been pissed off by your trip or, <laughs> or something along those lines <laughs> Oh, yeah, me too. Don't worry. No, I'm I'm sure I've died to you many times and cursed your name to the heavens. <laughs> <Would you? laughs> uh, but this has been so great. I really appreciate it. it. Like it. There's some kind of pride I have with like people actually knowing me in a community. And I mean, that goes to show you the insane tight knit community we really had. Yeah. What a good time. So it's cool. been really fun. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>